Right, we are back for the very exciting second edition talking about the law of one with Mr. Fox and Bryce from Esoteric Atlanta. And Bryce and I are co-hosting this episode like we did with the first one. But before we get started, let's start with Mr. Fox. How are you doing, Mr. Fox? I'm doing great. And I really appreciate you having me on again. We're so looking forward to it. How are you doing, Bryce? I'm so excited. I am so I'm so appreciative that Mr. Fox decided after many years of me begging him to come on, the channel started coming on and talking about this stuff because as I, we were saying before we started filming, the stuff that he sh Mr. Fox has shared with me over his years and years and years of research has actually brought me a lot of peace during this time of of huge transformation for our world as we start to move up as they say harvest. Um, and and I, I've noticed from some of our comments, a lot of people are very nervous because of the um, craziness and that I, I think hopefully Mr. Fox coming on and talking about this will, will bring some peace to people and give them a starting point to do their own research as well into this, um, this theory, this philosophy. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Fantastic. Now, for those of you that are watching this one for the first time, both Bryce and I on our channels will have the link below to the first episode that we did to Mr. Fox. You don't have to listen to them in orders, but I really strongly suggest you listen to both because we're not going to repeat what we covered last time because this is such a fascinating and interesting subject that's got so much relevance to what we're all going through at this moment in time, as you were saying, Bryce that we don't we want to get through in this series as much as possible so when we're using terminologies if it says anything you don't um understand please either put notes in the comments but before we do that go back and listen to the first one because we might have covered it there so today we are going to start with the really really important subject of trying to understand in more details the different densities mr fox so let's start there and let's hand it over to you Okay, great. Yeah, so I'm going to try to run through um, the evolutionary process of a planet and how that impacts our experience uh, here and what we're experiencing now in, in, in the world. Um, and so I wanted to start out by um, quoting uh, one of the answers to a question posed to Ra, and, uh, and that'll help you know, start move down, uh, help us move down the path of, of through all the different, what they call densities a planet goes through during its evolutionary cycle. So Ra was asked about, you know, it, their history um, going back as far as they can remember. And Ra said, the path of our learning is graven in the present moment. There is no history as we understand your concept. Picture, if you will, a circle of being we know the Alpha and Omega as infinite intelligence. The circle never ceases. It is present. The densities we have traversed at various points in the circle correspond to different characteristics of cycles. Logos, and Logos is this, a, a spirit, the innermost spirit of, you could say, a galaxy or a planet. Yeah, so they say a Logos has the plan of all densities in potential completion before entering the space-time continuum of first density. Thus, the energy centers exist before they are manifest. And so the planet, the Logos, has already its plan of evolution already laid out. And then it just sets upon the path of going through these different densities. So it starts out in the first density. The cycle of awareness is what they call that. And it lasts approximately 2 billion years. And during that time of first density, all the beings on the planet, so we're talking about beings as being minerals or the earth and water and and so these beings are in chaos. It's like energy undirected and random. And slowly, over billions of years, a focus of self-awareness starts to form. So as light comes from the darkness, 
constructing a certain type of experience, these beings in the first density will eventually gain some, some form of, of consciousness. So the mineral and water life upon the planet starts learning through its interaction with fire and wind. And so through these billions of years, this, this awareness eventually evolves through, through the water or vapor uh, becoming sea, a sea or a lake or a river and the minerals sort of forming together and the earth being shaped by the ele all these elements interacting. So it starts to gain a landscape. And during that process, there was, like I said, this consciousness is born as well as all these things start to organize themselves it creates the right environment for viable life to start to be formed and then that's what moves us into second density so after this two billion years of all this interaction with these beans these minerals and water um then you know organisms can start to grow it gives it potentiates it and so organisms grow plants grow and out of that animals are formed and they have their experience you know and that during the second density cycle that lasts that's the longest density and it lasts four you know approximately four and a half billion years long and so now the the plants and animals these beings are interacting with one another gaining experience and they call the second density the cycle of growth and so the plants grow the animals grow they interact with one another and they get to a certain point of evolution they start to be able to gain self-awareness and that's when the planet starts to move into third density and and that's the density that we're going through now and uh and so in third density they call it you know, not only the cycle of awareness, but the, the density of choice. And so now you're becoming self-aware. And, and at that point, you can start to exercise your, your free will. And they say that, that that is what is what they call a distortion upon our awareness. So when we moved away from uh, the creator, in a sense, we were given this this free will and now in third density we have to use this free will to choose a polarity so we we can we can split off and we can choose to serve the light or we can choose to serve the dark and that choice gives us a path forward or how we're going to find our way back to the creator either through service to self or service to others. So Bob, can we just, before we go further, can we just like clarify for the audience that for us as human beings, what you're saying is third density is the first, first stop where a humanoid humans are existing on a planet. So when a planet is just second density, it's right. only animals and plants. So just so people are aware yes. of that. Animals, plants, minerals, correct. Yes. No, so that's the difference between like an, an animal on planet Earth right now would be considered a second density, whereas we're a third density because we have a more complex I, understanding of consciousness than like an animal. An animal is 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 still in that second density um, understanding of consciousness, which is why they're so innocent, really, is because they don't have the complex understanding that we do. Correct. Right. Correct. That would be an interesting discussion because I know there's a lot of people that would have a different view of that. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, right. And you know, we do have some third density animals living with us in third density. Also, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, a landscape can be a third density being. A mountain can be a third density being. I was just having a, a conversation with with someone the other day about Mount Kalash, and. Uh, it's considered the sacred, a very sacred mountain, and a, a lot of a lot of uh, third density being attention has been put on that on that mountain. And they say when a third density being uh, uh, puts a lot of their self awareness onto 
something like a mountain, it has the potential of becoming a being. Mm. And, uh, and so, yeah, so some animals can be thir third density. Yeah, some landscapes can be third density. And I think we'll realize that more as we, as we uh, sort of, uh, our veil is lifted. Anyway, um, I don't want to get off of, uh, mm. off of topic. So the density of, of choice, third density, which is the, the shortest density, which is 75,000 years long, uh, cut into three cycles of 25,000 years. So we're here to make a, a make a choice, but not just uh, not just a choice. It has to we have to be putting energy, our awareness towards that choice. So ev eventually you have to be conscious of of that that choice you're making to, to polarize what they call service to self or service to others. And so that's just what this third density cycle is for, is to, is to make that choice, to, to gain self-awareness and to eventually through that self-awareness with your free will to choose the path that you would like to what they call polarize on. So eventually you're putting energy towards either service to others or service to self and you accumulate enough experience and enough drive and direction towards that, that you eventually can be what they call harvested into the next density. So I can go a lot of places here. If you two want to ask me some questions about, about the third density cycle and, and, and that aspect of like polarizing, so uh, we can, can we go, clarify we can just so people understand when we talk about the third density experience, it takes many, many lifetimes of a person coming back and living in the third to, to kind of work towards that um, potential of going one way or the other way. Um, and you will not go one way on, or the other way until you've actually made that choice, correct? No, not correct, actually. Not correct. So, you no, know, because Ra, Ra talks about how you have had to have polarized to a pretty good extent on on that path whether it be positive or negative to even realize that there is a choice to be made got it so it's almost like you've already reached a certain level of your own just in, intuit nature of doing what you're doing to realize oh i'm making a choice this is actually exactly. you, okay yeah. cool. uh, yeah, you've evolved enough you've evolved enough within that choice within that direction to be able to reach that point where you go, wow, I'm starting to understand what this is all about. So this yeah, is why I've had this back in your, it, Yeah, let's say that the, the service to others path, you could be on a path and you, and you enjoy giving to others, you enjoy helping others, you notice that your profession, you know, or the things, your passions have to do with bringing more fulfillment to people's lives. Um, you know, and it can have in many different ways that could be expressed. It's not just that you're, you know, a healer or a yoga yeah. teacher or anything like that. It could, be, it could be so simple, so simple. That doesn't mean working in a soup kitchen. It can, you could be a musician or an artist. You know, that brings joy into people's lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, there's a multitude of ways that you can you can serve others, just like there's a multitude of ways that you can serve yourself. Yeah. And 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 so what it said is that that both paths, positive and negative, are legitimate paths to merging with the one infinite creator. Okay, so I've got a few questions about this. So First one on the um, level of awareness of the choice you've got. So I can think just off the top of my head of a few people that are so service to others in their daily actions, what I would call really community minded people that heart and soul of the community, yeah. but haven't necessarily gone down a spiritual development path. Right. How much actual conscious awareness do people have, or is that not the point at all? And the reason I'm asking this is we can get almost caught in that spiritual ego where people think because they've done so much work and studying and they understand the principles, yeah. but might not be displaying them in their daily actions, as opposed to someone like I've got the most amazing neighbor who's the most selfish to self service to oh, yeah. person I can think of. Right. But you know, wouldn't have a conscious awareness of that. 
right? It, the conscious awareness of that doesn't really matter. Right. You, you can have no spiritual knowledge whatsoever and still be able to move on in your path of evolution down that path of service to others. Knowledge, knowledge, spiritual knowledge doesn't equal higher frequency or mm. more light or, you know, even really more spiritual understanding. Mm. You know, you can go through the, your third density cycle and graduate, what they call it, graduate into fourth density positive with with no knowledge whatsoever you don't even have to know that you're making that choice that choice just comes natural through many many lifetimes you know because you know just because this planet or a planet in general goes through that seventy-five thousand year third density cycle you don't have to make it in that seventy-five thousand years you can go through a whole planet cycle and be reincarnated over and over again for that whole seventy-five thousand year master cycle and when that planet shifts over to fourth density whether it be positive or negative in our case positive fourth density positive is what this planet's moving into you'll just be moved if you didn't graduate to fourth density you'll just be moved to another planet and you'll experience the same veil over your consciousness yeah and that's another thing is that when you go into third density you enter into that density with with a veil over your consciousness so so you know they they say rock explains how there have been planets that have have gone into their third density cycle and the inhabitants of that planet the beings of that planet didn't have a veil over their consciousness and so they're in that third density cycle with still you know, having uh, that fundamental connection with the creator and all of their inherent abilities that that would, you know, would normally be uh, granted. I, I don't know if that's the proper word um, in fourth density cycle. And what I mean by that is that, you know, there would be no real suffering on that planet. You would be able to, if there was any issues with your body, you could immediately heal those issues with the power of your mind. You you would be able to naturally, you know, there would be no uh, words spoken. You would just telepathically communicate with people. You would be able to do all the what they what the yogis would call siddhis. All the siddhis you would you would have um, being able to to travel anywhere you want telepathically and things like things like that. And they said that that during that third density cycle, you would think that the the people would be able to graduate very easily into fourth density but actually that wasn't the case because it's friction that makes us grow and that friction comes through through having that that veil over your consciousness you know so you're so you're stumbling around in the dark in a sense and and that creates uh that creates a more potent learning environment because when when the veil is is not there life is so easy you have you have no drive to even help others you're just living in harmony there's no issues and so there's no work to be done and so so those it's the suffering that creates through, what's that it's the suffering that creates the opportunity for awareness and for wisdom. Oh, but also it's it, it also it's the suffering of others that creates the opportunity to serve which Okay, so I, I just want to understand that in a bit more detail if I can. So you don't need the veil when you go to fourth density or above because you're either in the positive or negative and therefore say like we're going fourth density positive, there right. won't be that suffering and therefore you don't need right. that veil. Is that what you're saying? Yes, right. And that's in, that's why after... That's why after third density, the the cycles are a lot longer because, uh, like for instance, in fourth density, it, the cycle lasts approximately thirty million years, and so, um, so it, your your ability to grow and to refine that growth is found. The greatest potential is found in third density. Of all the densities, you can do more more work on your when i say self your your spirit or your light body you can do more work in third density because of the 
uh, because of the inherent friction than you can in all the densities beyond that. Well, it makes sense in the sense it's almost like resistance training. It's almost like if you if you are if you do go to like a spinning class, a bike class, you can put more and more resistance on the bike to make it harder to get you stronger. And so when you're coming, if the third density is like the density of resistance. So you can yeah. come in and get stronger. And that makes sense. You're saying that because we've talked about many people, many souls opting to come back to third density after some runs through other densities to refine things in their soul to go back through the amnesia because of the value that's there or like right. um, swim teams, you know, they have what they call drag suits that they will put like if you wear a speedo bathing suit, you'll put another speedo on top of it with cuts in it. So it catches water. So you can yeah. practice with it on. So it catches more water to make it harder. Um, cause that resistance is what's making you stronger. And so if you look at that spiritually, so basically like third density is the last stop of the veil. Once you leave their density, there's no more veil anymore. You're able to see things clearly for how it is. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, and then there's, there's a more refinement of the work in a sense. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, and once, so once you move in, once you move into fourth density, then, you know, the, the process starts where you, where you look back over your third density cycles and and you start to learn you start to process all of that potent stuff that you went through yeah and let, let's let, before we go to the fourth density let, let's back up a little bit and talk about the uniqueness of our third density cycle um because it sort of ties back into the the extreme other side of what we're experiencing and that's third density cycles that went through the process with no veil. Yeah. Cause like I said, it's not just that you're aware that there's a specific type of polarization that you have to gain. It's that you have, you know, the, the environment that helps to potentiate that. Yeah. And so, so here in our third density cycle, unlike some third density cycles where where some third density cycles it, there's a, a, it's mostly or if not all positive moving societies so you can say that like for instance raw talks about during their third density cycle you know 99.9 percent .9 of everyone was moving to service to others there was no what they call mixed mixed harvest Mm. unlike what we're going through you understand so yeah. planet could be mostly positive third density cycle mostly negative third density cycle or it can be a mix between the two and that's the most uncommon is a mix between the two and that's that's what we're experiencing now and that cycle because we're very close to graduating into a fourth density positive towards the end of a third density cycle that has the potential for mixed polarity it creates an enormous amount of chaos because it's almost like there's a battle taking place yeah and that's what we're experiencing now as we get close to shifting over the fourth density positive all the all the negative the people gr trying to graduate to negative have to have to leave but until that split hap happens, they're going to continue on their path of polarization. They and they can't and and, and if you if if it's someone on the service to self path, especially someone who's far along the service to self path, and and is aware that they are on that path, they have a deep understanding that they'll never surrender because. It, it, because their ultimate goal, the ultimate goal of fourth density service to self is conquest over other selves. It's the, the polar opposite of the positive path. We're looking to serve others as best we can. 
They're looking to enslave. That's the concept. They're looking to enslave. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. So let, I want to just so clarify that with people because there's a <laughs> lot of misunderstandings where people say, "Oh, the controllers have surrendered." It's just a movie. And I'm no, that's not true because for them to surrender would depolarize them. So that's that's not at all true. Can we talk a little bit about that so people really understand this? Right. Yes. Th that they have to to, to be on the neg a negative be on the to be on the se service to self path is actually a more difficult path to be on is is what Ra says because you have to you have to gain 90 95% polarity towards service to self to be able to graduate service to self so that's why they do the wicked things they do exactly yes they can never they can never they can never give up they they'll fight to the very end and 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 that's not just that's not just because of wanting to polarize that's also in someone on the path of service to self they they lack an ability to foresee their ultimate destruction and and that's because they lack they lack the the intuition the creativity of the higher of, of the higher centers to be able to to have that foresight and that's another reason why they would never they, they would never let themselves even entertain them being defeated. Yeah. They'll fight to the very end. And and it's almost it's almost um like martyrdom, but in the negative in the negative sense. Oh, oh I mean Ra and both Ra and the Cassiopeians have talked about how how martyrdom is not a positive attribute. Mm. Yeah. And so they're, they're in a way they're they're willing to be destroyed on their path of service to self yeah so to think that that the quote-unquote controllers of this planet are the ones that would like to control because they're really not in control but the ones that would like to control this planet um so if they're in that situation would they not when they eventually leave their current human body won't they just go to uh of either another third density planet or a fourth density negative planet right they would they would either if they haven't gra if they haven't graduated in into fourth density then they would go to another planet yeah or if they graduated they would go to a they would go to another third density planet and if they yeah. did graduate they would go to a uh, fourth density negative planet so you can see why in a way they're quite happy to you know even if this is a not at a conscious level you can see why they're not going to give up because either way they're going to go somewhere they're not going to be taken off but i've got right. a couple of questions about this the f and answer them in whichever order you want to mr fox so the first one is if this is the case then how does that fit into so many different traditions spiritual practices where they are really seeking to understand so for example the hermetic principles or something is my first question and then the other question relates to animals if animals are most of them second density yeah what? okay so I, I didn't quite i didn't quite understand the first question well, the first question we were talking about um a bit earlier about how you don't necessarily have to have that conscious spiritual knowledge to be right. um going uh in the positive service to other self so why yeah. do so many people spend so much time and effort on the pursuit of spiritual awareness and enlightenment because i mean that you know gaining spiritual knowledge through different religions and different practices you know it definitely helps you along along the path of of realizing you know your inherent oneness with the creator and and also teaching you um you know different ways of of thinking and acting out in the world that brings more peace and harmony you know in both your life and other lives you know and so there's nothing there's nothing wrong with with uh, with these spiritual, you know, disciplines or 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 beliefs, you know. If, if and so, 
you know, they, they are important. And you can, gra you can graduate, you know, to fourth density before, before the planet does, you know, as a whole. And so, you know, when the, when the, some spiritual teachings like in Hinduism talk about, you know, the ending of your reincarnations, yeah. you know, I think that what they're talking about is your ending of reincarnations within the third density cycle. And yeah. Not that, you know, and I think that that's where, you know, you know, as I've become, you know, I've, as I've gained greater understanding through raw material on the Cassiopeians, I, I've started to realize, you know, the um, maybe the the half truths that are presented in some of these some of these uh, religious um, texts, you know, like they talk about in Hinduism, you know, gaining through these practices, uh, these yoga practices, gaining enlightenment, and then you know you don't have it, you don't experience any more births or deaths, and they make it seem as though you immediately merge with the Creator and it's done. Yeah, you've gained enlightenment, and that's it. But I think that that where we're making a mistake is that not understanding the different densities we have to go through through mm -hmm. our you know vast spiritual journey. And so I think they're when they're saying becoming enlightened and, and not be you know and ceasing to be reincarnated they're just talking about moving into the fourth density cycle and so you could say that maybe all of these religions all these spiritual teachings are just to help us along that path to graduate in the fourth density positive yeah yeah and so we get so, we get so, we <laughs> say, all we get religions so, are bringing you positive some are taking you negative um, yeah no, that's that's I true I want to so say they're, they talk about they talk about heaven, and I think that they are what they're talking about is fourth density positive. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I was thinking too as you were saying that, Mr. Fox, because we actually talked about this this morning before we jumped on with Catherine. Um, you said something about how, like, before the Great Awake, I had for my case specifically, I had done so much spiritual work before the Great Awakening happening that it hit me differently. And as you were saying that, I was thinking, okay, same thing with the raw material because I had done so much spiritual work on my own through yoga in India before I even was introduced to the raw material, I had a deeper understanding immediately when you started talking to me about the law of one. And I don't know if I would have had that same understanding if I had not participated. So I think for every person, all these spiritual practice are just tools that are bringing you to the same understanding. And I think it just depends on the person karmically what's going to help them does that is that is that kind of what you're saying mr fox yeah uh -huh. yeah for sure yeah whatever practices resonate with you and at that time you know helping you along the path to, to you know or helping you make make a choice yeah you know, which, uh, Both which different routes to call. get there yeah uh -huh. so on that note if someone has graduated false density positive would they leave this earth plane if they're on a third density planet you know, yes. could you be still physically living in your body and be fourth density at the moment? I I, I do think, I, I believe that that's so. And I think, believe that that's what we would call these ascended masters, you know, these um, these people that have reached, you know, what some would say enlightenment, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, you can you can choose to, to stick around and to finish living your life out. And, and you can move, I think that, you know, after you pass away, you can choose to either stick around this planet and and help others sort of in spirit form in a sense, or you can choose to move on to another fourth density planet and live out your fourth density experience there. That's that's so to clarify that's how I, that's how I understand it. You so know, let's not talking about this timeline we're in because I know that's very different and we can talk about how we're going to be writing it with the earth which is very different than what most people experience but let's just say like that it's like 1930 or something and we want your grandparents all of a sudden reaches fourth density positive awareness but they're only like 40 years old so you're saying they're not going to drop dead right then and just move on to the next planet they're going to get the opportunity to finish their natural life and when they pass away then they'll be able to make the choice to stick around in spirit form to right. help from the other side of the veil or just move move on to the next incarnation into fourth density positive is that what you're saying yes 
They don't just drop dead immediately when enlightened hits, <laughs> or else I don't know if many people would be taking on a spiritual practice, you know. Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, they, I think they usually end up being teachers, and they'll teach, you know, for the rest of their lives. You know, that's probably the, the way that they would choose to serve others. Yeah. So let's talk about the animals issue then. So if most animals, some are third density at the moment living on this planet, but a lot are second density, um, which means that they not haven't got to the level of free will. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, can the second density animals, have they got to then, because there's so much, you know, information, you know, so many people are so interested about what animals are going to be with us on the fourth density positive planet. So how does that work? Do they do Ra uh, talk about that at all? Yes. And I'm trying to recall, I think the Cassiopeians talk about it as well. For one, with, when this planet shifts over to fourth density, they can, they can either choose to stay or leave. Yeah, some of your, your animals could come with you. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, when we, have, when we have animals that we, bring, that we have that are very close to us, we, we share our third density consciousness with them. And mm. we, we envelop them with our third density consciousness. And it actually potentiates their ability to graduate into third density beings. And so if that were the case, if that were the case, if, if your animals were potentiated enough through you enveloping them, they would have to go to a third density planet and go through their third density cycle. But if they're second density, they haven't potentiated enough to become third density, then from what I understand, they can choose to come with us, to stay with us. Robbie better will, Robbie better be choosing to go with me because otherwise there, there will be so so on, so that, that's a good question that leads into this whole and some of the fourth density stuff we we could start easing into is that you know through it's a, this planet is going to be newly fourth density yeah mm -hmm. so it's being birthed as fourth density and the beings that are going to be here that are graduating from this third density cycle into fourth that's so the only the only beings that are going to be able to live on this planet are first, second, and fourth, because the third density beings leave because we, as new fourth density beings, don't haven't developed the ability to hide ourselves from third density, and we can't interfere with third density beings because we don't want to interfere with their with their free will. And so all third density beings that haven't graduated the fourth have to vacate. So how does that fit with the role of a teacher then? So if, you know, so we're talking about, we've got loads of people who, who teach a lot of the lessons that they've learned in whatever area it might be. So how does that differentiate with the concept of free will? Where's the line in the sand with that? Because so you're saying a fourth, a fourth density graduated enlightened master staying here and teaching third density beings. Is that what you're saying? Well, even on the third density, you've got third density beings teaching other third density beings. So surely That's... any sort of learning. Uh -huh. Well, we okay. So talk about the mass formation psychosis and the brainwashing and things like that. That that surely massively interfering with free will. So that would have anyone right. who's participating in that would, by the very nature, be on the negative surface to self path. Yes, for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, because that's how they're enslaving people. Yeah, as I said, that's the enslavement is the hypnosis they're doing. The field. But ultimately, people at the end of the day have their choice to eventually be aware enough to break free or you know yeah. observe the triggers as we have, that we talk about a lot the cognitive like feels, oh i'm triggered i need to observe something i mean we see that we don't only see that from the left we also see that happening in our community too and um so yeah and i was with the teachers i was thinking too the free will choice of going to a teacher or not as well um but, but you yeah. know, one of the reasons well i was going to say clarify is one of the reasons why it's important for for those graduating the fourth density cycle that that they're respecting the free will of third density that's part of service to others mm -hmm. yeah and so it's not a it's not a part of, of of fourth density service to self 
So that's that's another reason why we would have to respect that that veil. So would that, that also there. cover things like, you know, sort of what we eat when we're in fourth density? Um, talk about the positive ones. <laughs> We know, uh, what the people, we do know what the people who are on the surface to sell the eating, and we won't go there. And this, right, yeah, <laughs> and I'm yeah. not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing through yeah. about through awfulness. This um, is obvious. Yeah, um, this but is it is. Fault. Sorry, Mr. Fox. Yeah, you were talking about this the other day. Yeah, about the fourth and sixth. Going to be eating rabbits, Mr. Fox. When no, you... I don't think I don't think we're going to be eating rabbits in fourth density. Good um, man, Mr. Fox. We do we do have to we do have to eat. Um, and it was, uh, it's interesting because um, eating in fourth density is actually um, helps us to learn. And, and they say that eating in fourth density teaches us patience because we're so deeply involved with the service of others that we have to be patient to step away and and feed ourselves, mm. yeah. And I'm sure you know whatever we consume will do no harm, because in fourth density positive, there can be no disharmony. Isn't that yeah. wild though? I mean, so many people we we make jokes about the num 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 wanting to eat, loving to eat, but when we're in fourth density, it's not even. It's literally going to be eating to live, and that's it. Right. Like we're going to have to be pulled away to actually sit down and eat something because we're going to be so engrossed in what we're doing for yeah. other people and in our own. Um, but you said something interesting too. I want to, want to, cause you, we were out, Mr. Fox, we were taking a walk the other day and you said how, like if the first couple of thousand years in our mind cycle of time, when we get to fourth density is really us recovering from third density, correct? Exactly. Uh huh. Yeah. It, it's, it, and it, it's recovering and it's processing everything that's happened to us and then through all our lifetimes and then it's all of all of the fourth density beings on the planet pooling all of their experiences together and us coming to an understanding of our third density experience as a whole and that creates what's called a social memory complex so eventually what we all do is is first process everything we've experienced personally and then experience everything everyone else has experienced per personally. And so we, we imagine the massive learning experience from that. So that harmonizes our third density as a whole. And that's where we all come together. And that's why there can be no disharmony is because we're all become one. In what the in what raw calls a social memory complex, and so then from there, we all make decisions together, and we all move together, and imagine how much can be done. Mm. So that's what they mean when they talk about unity consciousness, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So, Mr. Fox, we have a lot of questions about med beds, and Catherine and I talked about this yesterday, and of course, I put up an Instagram story um, a couple days ago saying like your your body is actually the med bed that you seek. Um, I don't actually really believe in this, this um, as you call it, the junk conspiracy cul-de-sac that we get so distracted by these abstract things that we, we stop doing our work, we stop focusing on our spiritual path because we think that there's something coming to save us like a med bed. And you said something very interesting off camera. Can you tell us your perception of the med bed when we jump into fourth density positive in the next like 20 to 30 years, as, as you were saying? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, okay, so as we move into fourth density positive and our veil is lifted, we have the ability to spontaneously heal ourselves. And so there'd be really no need for any med beds, you know? So in my understanding of where we are in this cycle, you know, we're, we're now, you know, closing, closing down this third density cycle and just about to move into the fourth density positive. And, you know, from what I understand within the next, you know, 20, 30 years, this is going to happen. And so, given that understanding, this this infatuation with this med bed stuff, 
is um, is a little comical because you know for me and what I've the, the understanding that I've gathered through both the Cassiopeians and the raw material is that you know when this veil is lifted, like I said, we're going to have the ability to heal ourselves, and uh, and so there would be no need for any kind of technology to help us achieve that. I think where a lot of people are wanting them is to bridge that gap for the next 20 or 30 years. There's a lot of people that are suffering right here, right now with terminal illnesses, missing limbs, animals, loved ones that are really ill. So I think a lot of people are wanting them as a, a building of the, a, as a bridge to get them to that stage. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does for sure. And I could see, I could see how people can get, get caught in that and, and, mm. uh, you know, and they could, they could have a lot of, a lot of hope um, from these, uh, these devices or this technology. But it's just probably not happening. happening. Because I, think I mean, I, I've heard a lot of talk about it, but I haven't seen any, any, um, any proof. Well, there are miraculous healing things available. And what some of the interviews that I listened to, Mr. Fox, where they were interviewing them about the technology of the healing technologies of the pyramids, and yeah. some of Ra's answers, if I recall correctly, and, co and correct me if I'm wrong, were that actually we don't need the crystals, we don't need to go back to the pyramids healing because we have the ability right here, right now, which would tie in with the fact that I understand that people want the med beds as a gap, but actually perhaps by the focus on that, they're not realising that those healing technologies are available right here, right now with what we've already got. Would that make sense? Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, also, you know, there's there as we get closer to the end of this, uh, this third density cycle, mm -hmm. it's, you know, all the suffering that we see through, you know, how our food has been depleted, yeah. how our environment has been has been polluted, so on and so forth. That That's part of the ending, like I said, of this mixed harvest third density cycle and what it's doing is it's really just it's offering people more opportunities to serve others mm. yeah so 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 things intensify suffering gets increased chaos gets increased because it's being offered as opportunity to serve and yeah so Instead of waiting around for things to happen, like med beds or, you know, what have you, maybe figuring out how people that aren't of ill health can help people that are suffering in whatever yeah. way they can. And that's know? interesting. We, I had a question or a comment about, um, you know, because people, I think what happens is people have this false sense of hope that this is all a movie and it's just actors, which is complete bullshit to me. That's complete. Um, and, and we talked about this in the last episode with you, Mr. Fox, that part of what the fourth density negative does is they try to infiltrate like a Trojan horse. So we know that the quote unquote truth or community has been heavily infiltrated because that's what the negative side does. And so when people are now having to face the realization that what they thought was reality isn't actually reality and that the bad guys for lack of a better word are still out there doing their stuff you know you've said that they've that they have said that the the bad guys will be able to get 80 percent done of what they wanted to get done before the, the before it's pulled and and i choose this person i'm paraphrasing what they said like how do you keep the faith when it's it's just being pummeled at you all the time and what you're saying is like this is the opportunity though this is the right. resistance this is what right. your soul needed for it to refine itself and instead of just like feeling sorry for, for yourself or like giving in to this group you use that resistance to help others to be even more loving even more kind right. um you know you you take the advantage of this this time to really really hone in and on that southern uh, uh, service to others practice right yeah and can we uh, can we kind of touch a little bit before we end our i know we've gone about an hour now but i wanted to to make it clear that what we've talked about mr fox is that when most planets flip from like third density or second density to third density or third density to fourth density most of the time all the inhabitants of the planet have to get off the planet correct that's from that's from third to fourth Okay, so, but this is a different situation, right, that we're in now? 
well, it's 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 unique in that since it's been such a tough seventy five thousand year third density cycle for this planet, there's there's going to be very few people that are going to be graduating either fourth positive or negative. That that's then that's where the wanderers come in the six density wanderers that that have that have decided to come here and to help lighten the planet and in hopes of of a greater amount of people making the choice moving into fourth density positive you know because th there's a very there, you know the very few amount of people are going to be graduating negative as well yeah you would think like oh this planet's mostly negative but actually it's mostly positive and we have a hard time seeing that because because a lot of the positive oriented people that may not be able to graduate into fourth density positive but definitely are on that positive path have had their consciousness sort of uh uh tweaked a little bit and have, have sent them you know in a state of turmoil and mm -hmm. so from the outside, it would look that like this person is on the negative path, when in reality, they could actually be a, a, a spiritual soul in distress. Because both the positive, distressed soul, and a truly negative soul, in a way, can seem very similar. And it's also too, I want to clarify is when we talk about graduating, I think one thing people have to understand is that there is a difference between what you know and what you do. And so I think one of the biggest um, role, roadblocks for our community is that a lot of people in this community, I think because they think they know some things about the truths of the world, that they're already guaranteed a ticket into the, the next timeline, but that's not true. There could be a, a friend you have that completely buys into the media but yet they are so service to others in the aspects of their life that they will absolutely be going forth density positive as well. Whereas there's a lot of people in our community that just because they know a few, they know things about what's going on, but they're still acting in very selfish, nasty, disgusting ways. So it doesn't even really matter what you know, the facts you know about what's happening. What matters is the essence of your soul. Does that make sense? The essence of your, your awareness as a soul. Am I making sense when I say that? Yeah, uh huh, for sure. So we can't judge people. That's one thing, you know, judge, not use GB judged. We can't judge people who've gotten this or who, you know, don't understand the conspiracies. You know, we can't judge them because we don't know. They could be more polarized more positive than we are. You know, does that make sense? Sure, 100%. Mm. And I know the, the conversation of wanderers is going to open up a whole new episode. Do we want to say that? I think that we need more? to do that. We need yeah. to do that in a, a separate episode. So I think I would hope that from people that have listened today, we can see why it's so important we talk about living your life, being in the present moment, actions speak louder than words. So we're seeing a lot of brilliant things um spring up about how we you can see they're very clearly moving both the individuals and helping the planet in terms of moving towards the fourth density pro um positive so some of the examples i would give is some of the amazing regenerative agriculture practices that are springing up and everything so would you say mr fox that just reiterating that when people are overwhelmed with yeah. the scale of what they're seeing going on the easiest solution for themselves and everyone else that they love is for them to pour that energy into an activity that is much more self service to others. For sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. The Cassiopeians even talk about how when you find yourself uh, in in a rut, whether it be in uh, in a in a business sense in your profession, or it be in uh, in the sense of just being being spiritually stuck is that the best way out of that is to turn your attention towards someone else and help them. And that's what helps you get out of your rut. And there's so much evidence, even some areas of modern medicine, 
are showing that that you know the best treatment for depression for example is to actually um get involved in some community activity and helping others and and that's sort of clinically proven so there's so much of this pulling together that i think gives people real hope that they can really enjoy this sort of 20 to 30 year transition period regardless of what your current state of health is your current state of wealth is etc because when you're just focused on the service to others a lot of the bits of the jigsaw puzzle will fall into place right totally yeah, and serving others can also be serving animals like people that like Catherine who loves going and giving your time to to a, at a humane society or you know helping because that is that's one thing i will say whenever somebody loses their pet when their pet passes away i, I don't even like to use the word pet whatever they're animal family member passes away, I always like to remind, you know, say, well, you know, you did your job, you enveloped them with so much love, you gave them a name, you gave them a family, you taught them self identity that that because of you, they now have the opportunity to graduate into third density and start that it was because of your love, you enveloping them. And that that when you told me that when we first started talking about love, when you told me that about with with the animals you have in your when you start to really love them and and share the life experience of a third density. Because you I mean you think about Ravi. Ravi is a street dog from India. Like he if he was still on the streets of India, he would not have the awareness of the third density experience that I have here in Atlanta because I by him being in my home he is experiencing that and his little personality is coming out. He knows how to make me laugh. He knows how to show off. He knows how to, you know, and so you're giving, you're by you unconditionally loving this being, you are giving it that ability to, you know, that's, and that's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's like, we get enveloped as third density, we get enveloped by fourth density loving beings as well. And so it's all about loving and giving of yourself to another being with the soul as, as an animal has. And so um, I know, Mr. Fox, we, we've joked about Robbie being 2.7 density. We're like, he's 2.7 density. He's just because he's, he's so he's so close to like having full on conversations. And, um, you know, and so how beautiful that experience is. It's, it's such a, I mean, having an animal in your home is such a beautiful ex experience anyway, um, because no other being is going to just love you without real judgment. You know, they don't care if you're rich or poor. They don't care if you live in a mansion or not. You know, they, they're still just, they just want to be with you. You know, and that's something for us to learn in return from them. But just to have that moment, just to really love your, you know, that is part of that service. I mean, we see what awful people do to animals all the time. We see what people on the service to sell do to animals. And so even giving of your time to other, you know, so the homeless shelters of animals, you know, you know, what I'm saying it's not just going, it's whatever makes you feel like you are a service to this time for the beings on the planet at this time. And so I'm thinking, though, next episode, we should do wonders in the hierarchy of the negative side. Would that be because yeah. that's kind of now we get the hierarchy of the negative side and the wanderers. Now we're talking about because wanderers only come from the positive side. So we can talk about like. Oh, yeah, I mean, there, there have been, there have definitely been negative wanderers, but, but they're, yeah. they're not as common as, as service to others wanderers. Because it's something very selfish or selfless to be like, you know yeah. what, I'm gonna go back down to that hot mess express. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> exactly. to one important point to everyone who's got animals in their lives. If we go back to what Mr. Fox was doing, explaining right at the start of this, go back and we listen to the difference between the different densities. And one of the important things of moving through those densities is choice and free will. So when you bring an animal into your family and you start to give that animal a choice in their care and listen to their feedback, then you can see why that's so, so important to them. So I just wanted to make that point to everyone because so many people don't realise that their animals have got the right and need that choice and need to exert their free will as much as we do. That is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, anything else that you want to finish with, Mr Fox, before we finish this one? No, I think that completes it for now. I mean, we can get into a lot of different areas, um, but yeah, let's stop there. I'm so excited about getting on to the Wanderers next. That's going to be absolutely brilliant. Um, anything else for you, Bryce, before we finish? I will put, and, and might, I know we're both going to be sharing this, but I will obviously be putting our first episode with Mr. Fox down in the description box below. I'll also be putting a link to the first book of the raw material. Um, because as always, I think Catherine and I are big promoters. We're just discussing this right now 
that's all we're doing. Um, it's up to you if you really want to start to embrace this philosophy, get the books for yourself. Um, Mr. Fox was telling me, what were you telling me the other day, Mr. Fox, that uh, you were on the Cassiopeian board and you saw somebody joined and yeah, they said uh, something about, uh, about you? About, about watching uh, one of your videos where you were interviewing me and how that's how they got directed to being a part of their, uh, their forum discussions. So yeah, guys, so whoever that was, thank you for mentioning us. And we want you, we want you to take your, you know, again, we're, we're on the path of service to others. We want you to have your free will choice. We, we don't want, we don't want to be your controller. We don't want to be, we don't want you enslaved to what we say. We want you to take this information and do your own research, make up your own opinions, come to your own conclusions um, and take your power back. And hopefully um, as you guys go down this road of really looking at the law of one, it will give you hopefully it will give you the same liberation and peace that it brought for people like myself. So, um, so yeah, what else is, and, and for my channel, Catherine, what's going on with your channel? What's new for you for people watching this from my channel? Yeah, exactly the same. All the links will be below. Enjoy, absorb, re-listen a couple of times. I've certainly re-listened to the first one a couple of times and each time I've got more and more out of it. And just think about, you know, if that clicks something else into place that perhaps it doesn't, all the little bits of the jigsaw puzzle for us to ponder over. Thank you so much, both of you. We will be back in a couple of weeks. Bye, right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.